Oh, yeah. I'll keep rolling. Oh, oh sweet. Oh, okay. Great. Cool. Oh. Well, we're already started. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. I've realized that all of my favorite movies have like a negative 12 on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> I feel like that's a contradiction, a woke comic. We're looking at like TikTok feeds of like, mm, ice cream's so good. Oh, yum, yum, banana. Yeah, whatever. I'm like, what do we do? Right. Talking to another individual with no phones, right. eye contact. It's almost an uncomfortable amount of eye contact. Like while I'm looking at you right yeah. now. I'm well, like, it's weird now that we we've been... were talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Now I feel uncomfortable. I didn't before. Before it was fine. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Travis Makes Friends podcast. Today, I'm sitting down with Nikki Howard. Nikki, Hello. what's up? Hello. Hi. Welcome how are you? Show. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's been a long time coming. You know, I knew we were going to get along when I uh, I went to your Instagram bio. And I think this was after I watched the video that you and Brent Pella <laughs> did on Lancaster. Um, which I definitely have some questions about. But I, so I go to your Instagram bio, and then the only thing that it says is a quote from one of my favorite movies ever, which is yes. uh, uh, Billy likes, Billy to, drink likes soda. to drink soda. Miss Lippy's car. Miss Lippy's car. <laughs> Is green. Is green. Thank you. You know, yeah. I put that there specifically so that I could weed out people that I knew I wasn't going to get along with. I'm like, if you understand this very, very specific quote, we're going to hit it what off. What about you, sideburns? Yeah. You want any of this milk? <laughs> no milk will ever be our milk. No milk. Yep. If you can't quote at least seven lines from that movie, then it's yeah. like, what? We're not on the same page. This is just, we're just, this is formality. Have really. you always been a big fan of comedy and oh my movies God. like that? Yeah. I just growing up was... It was my escape. My mom also, she had me way older in life. And I was uh, her. I grew up on South Park, like as a child, okay. because my mom had no reference point for like, she was like, it's a cartoon. It's animated. Exactly. It's totally fine. Yeah. For kids. <laughs> so that's what I grew up with. And I was like, oh, crank yankers. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Cal comes a bitch. Can I curse on here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like this. And then, uh, you know, and so she was like, I remember the first book, one of the first books I read that I, as like, was my choice was Chris Rock's book. It was just really? essentially like a, a transcript of his stand up. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is what I need to be doing. This is my <laughs> life. And like, and my this mom. This is like elementary school? Yeah, but I was probably, yeah, elementary school, okay. like middle school. There's like a, I have this picture of me reading that book and next to me is my brother reading Howard Stern's Dirty Words <laughs> in the backseat of a car. Just like, these are my children. It's not Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys. <laughs> not really. Yeah. My mom's like, my children are reading. This is good. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I pretty much just from the beginning, yeah. I was like, this is it for me. And for the squares that don't know what movie we're talking about. Billy Madison. It's, it's Billy Madison. Yeah. It, yeah. Who could, I, I, we didn't even say it. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yeah, it's nudie, Only, nudie magazine day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, guys. <laughs> oh man, there's so many good, good parts in that movie. It's ridiculous. It's great. What are some of your other favorites? Uh, movies. Yeah. Oh my god. Comedy specifically. Com. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I don't watch anything <laughs> other than that, really. Okay. When I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of. Uh, what, what was I like referencing recently? And pretty much any Sandler. I love, mm. I've realized that all of my favorite movies have like a negative 12 on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> like I, Freddy Got Fingered, I love, just because it's so absurd. I don't think it, I saw that one. Oh, Freddy Got Fingered? No. Daddy, would you like some sausage? It's like Tom Green. I love it. Not not because it's like the funniest movie ever, because I just like, I'm like, how did they give him so much money to make this? It, yeah, it's yeah. insane. Like, <laughs> go watch it and you'll be like, what this the This is ludicrous. Yeah. Like, it makes no sense. I fell um, away with uh, Hot Rod. Did you ever watch love Hot Rod? Love Hot Rod, yeah. That was one of my favorites. Is one my of my name's favorites. Rod. Yeah. I like to party. That whole yeah. scene All is All of insane. it, I, Andy Samberg, Bill Hader. I know for a fact you do not party. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one who likes to party. Uh, babe, no babe. That's so Will good. Arnett's it's like small part in that movie so is- So fucking yeah, good. excellent. Um, yeah, yeah uh, Step Brothers. I mean, all Step of- brothers, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I love, uh, I was really throwing it back the other, A Night at the Roxbury. Uh, oh, also has yeah. like a seven on Rotten Tomatoes because <laughs> I went through, I recently went through this. So I was like, I got to see like, because they'll give these ratings to movies that are just like, I'm like, atrocious. This, this has yeah. no plot. Right. I'm like, this is just critics being like, fuck yeah. yeah I'm like, right, let me exactly. see what my favorite movies are rated. <laughs> They're all like dog Not good. shit. <laughs> Not even on there. Yeah, never good. Um, yes, all of them. This is an art. 
No, you know? no. It is to me, though. But it is. You know? It's like That's why it's subjective. You have to know what you're watching. Right. This is not... They didn't <laughs> set out being like, mm, uh, this is going to be a thinker piece for yeah. people. <laughs> They're just like, that farts. <laughs> yeah. Like, how many laughs can we get yeah. in a 90-minute period? Exactly. Yeah. Which is yeah. also what's so great about, like, South Park and oh Family my God. Guy and uh, some of those. All of it. Uh, South Park yeah. is just like... It's, it's just beautiful. It's brilliant. It, it honestly... Like, and I love... Any comedy that m- embraces and makes fun of everybody. Everybody, like, yes. Like I, I get, I get tired of like when I watch something and they're so one sided yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like you know, a lot of late night shows and stuff like that. Even now, it's like you just you, you keep hounding this one thing all Everything the time. Everything has like, an agenda. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But then you go watch South Park and it's like they make fun of these people, they it's, make fun of those people, they make fun of that person, this person, this like this point of view, that point of view. Yeah. Christians, atheists, everybody. Muslim, like they make fun of everybody. Nothing's off limits. No. And to me that's like p- that's pure comedy. Yes. Because it really comedy is. should actually be somewhat philosophical and yeah. get people to think about things. Yes. You know what I mean? Like when you have a visceral reaction to something that's said in a in like a, a stand up routine yeah. or a sitcom or animated show like that, you know, like it genuinely makes you kind of question yourself and ask yeah. you like, why am I so like offended to my core about this? Right. Is it really that big of a deal? Yes. What am I thinking? You yeah. Know I mean? Or when people just put it in a light that's like, oh, I do do that. Like wait, even yeah. like a stereotypes is just like people laugh if you're making fun of that. Like look at Sebastian Maniscalco, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. talking about his Italian family. Like yeah. that crowd is all Italian. Right. Like, and then he's just talking about the stereotypes <laughs> of his people right and it's people love it because they want to feel like a community and Mm -hmm. i mean granted there's the other side of the coin where like people get i just i don't know i'm it takes a lot to offend me (laughs) (laughs) i i I, I think you can't be in comedy yeah that's that's true apparently now you can i don't know there's like a whole lane of that's fair like the woke uh, comics sure sure which i've never seen (laughs) i I don't i just don't understand it i don't i don't think you can put it i feel like that's a contradiction a woke comic yeah right yeah right how do you push the envelope if you're worried about what people are thinking i don't know it is scary though now just even like you get especially when you see the the people that like flip right you know like like uh like you see like a kimmel right who like used to do whatever he wanted to do and then it was like all of a sudden it was like oh i'm like religiously following this particular vein now it's like Ah oh, man. I know. People, <laughs> like, society. It's like everybody, especially when you're like, when you have bosses, I'm sure, where right. it's like, you have to, you can't do this. You can't do this because we need the ratings. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Look at SNL. Right. Like, what happened to SNL? I'm like, oh, Jesus man. Christ. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Well, fall from glory is what oh, happened. Oh my God, yeah. you guys. Yeah. <laughs> this used to be something. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's like, I might watch a clip or two if they're like, it just, if, if, if it is watched enough to get to like my reels or shorts yeah. or youtube or something then it's like okay that's probably actually funny yeah but i don't watch i haven't watched a full show no i can't ages. it's just like it's i just feel like i don't like when i feel like something's being forced on me yes. it's like if i wanted to watch this i would just go actively seek it out but i'm right. here for comedy and now i feel like you're pushing your i don't care what <laughs> exactly. the agenda is i feel like you're pushing something on me that right. i don't want to buy right i just i just want to laugh i'm just yeah. i'm just trying to zone out and to be fair some of the late night hosts like they have some pretty sweet gigs yeah so it's like if you're gonna sell out you may as well sell out for yeah. getting an awesome job like that yeah that's, <laughs> you know that's I mean? the like, thing they're like well like, like you'll put that contract in front of me like eh, absolutely. i might say that yeah. too you know i'm all i'm saying this because i have no contract if somebody approached me and <laughs> nobody's like, offered yet let, yeah. look, look i will be as one-sided as possible <laughs> Somebody to be clear, me. yes, yeah. uh, producers. Yeah, yeah but if you're listening, my yeah. email is. I'll yeah. flip immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Say the word. Okay, so how did the Lancaster thing come about? Because you're, are you from LA? <laughs> no, I'm from Florida. Okay, so yeah. how, like, how you you live here now? Yeah. How did you even figure out Lancaster existed, and then know enough about it to be like, we should make a video making fun of this terrible oh. place? <laughs> It's funny you should ask. Um, so, I, I mean, I've driven through Lancaster before. And so. For what? A, driven through it to get oh, someplace to go somewhere else. else. Yeah. yeah. Or and, Bakersfield? Yeah, exactly. It's very similar. <laughs> Yakaipa, like all of that kind of like, what are we doing? Yeah. There's right. very specific it's people. Like, is this California? Does it count as California? Is everybody yeah. okay? Like, what's going on here? Like, are you guys good? <laughs> we just forgot that you guys are <laughs> the here. The answer's no. Nobody's checked in on you guys. They just put a couple chain restaurants. So yeah. like, they'll be fine. 
Yeah, fine. there's a Chili's. Yeah, there is yeah, a Chili's. We, we've made it. We yeah. referenced <laughs> to make sure. And an Applebee's. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Brent. Applebee's is new, though. It, I mean, that's. It, yeah, it's like <laughs> they're like coming the last up. five, six years. Yeah. Gentrification <laughs> over there. That's what they call it. There's an Applebee's. They're being gentrified. Oh, um, yeah, so Brent, Pella, and I, who's one of my best friends, writing partner, make a bunch of stuff together. Um, yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't even remember. We We ended up we wanted to shoot a video it was a machine gun kelly and um megan fox uh, parody yeah. and we wanted to shoot it at a cemetery um and we were like oh well there's a cemetery in lancaster and i don't know why we were just like people in lancaster <laughs> like what the fuck is going on with them i i'd never like explored lancaster because i'm you know why would you normal yeah yeah right. but i just from the the drive one or two drives i've had through yeah, it yeah. i was like I think I can get a grasp on these people. <laughs> um, and then we thought it would be, it was the holidays. And so we were like, well, let's do like a, let's do a, um, like a destination video. Yeah. Destination yeah, for, for someplace yeah. nobody wants to go. Yeah. And so it's like, let's get tourism to Lancaster. <laughs> um, and we literally went out there. We were just like, I got like, I was like, uh, this what's funny is like it didn't take you very long to find a, a totally abandoned dirt field with a toilet bowl in it oh the only we literally <laughs> you know were like I mean? next to the cemetery and we're like yeah. let's just walk and yeah. then that's what happened we were just like this is perfect <laughs> this is, we could not have asked for a better uh, location yeah, we didn't have to scout like we weren't we, we didn't drive to nine dirt lots to look for a toilet we parked like, <laughs> and then walked around and shot the video and this is like the cemetery for those listening is like by lancaster boulevard yeah this is like downtown lancaster yeah i was like this is perfect yeah. and we just looked at stuff and we were like that that <laughs> that <laughs> yep let's i'll put a oh, pregnant man. belly on so wig funny. Again, I we I think Brent had like a mustache and like yeah. blood like gloves like uh, fingerless leather gloves. Yeah. I was like gonna put a some pink leggings on and yeah. a lot of rhinestones and say I cut hair. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you do in Lancaster? That is a good question. Yeah, yeah. So you cut hair or you work at Northrop is basically. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. this is. But I, it, was, it was such a niche video. Sometimes we do yeah, videos sure. and we're just like, this is for us or like right. a very specific group of people. Right. It's like, I don't look at any of the, I'm, I, I feel like the only one, but for my own sanity, I can't look at like the analytics or anything because mm. I'm like, the second um, I start investing in like, oh, how did this do? And yeah. all I was well, like, it's not, I'm just, I have to just write what I think is funny and like, Otherwise, I'm going to go fucking nuts. Yeah, you're going to make videos based on what you think works exactly. versus what you actually like to make videos Yeah, about. and I'm like, I'm very observational. It's just my style of comedy is like observational. So yeah. the second I'm like, oh, I should do, it's like you box yourself in. So sure. thank God. Otherwise, I don't know if we would have done that video. <laughs> <laughs> How many people want this right now? This Lancaster video. It's in high demand. It's yeah. a trending search. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Lancaster comedy. <laughs> Well, it made me laugh, and Thank it's actually you. I think the I think that is the video that I found you on the oh. first time. Um, then I started seeing a bunch of stuff with you in uh, Stevie Emerson, yeah, and I was like, this girl is hilarious. Oh, so thanks. that's when I had to had to reach out and get you on the show. Uh, but that was it was just like such a perfect. Video. I sent it to all my you know buddies <laughs> from growing up and stuff, and everybody's laughing at it. Um, how, how did you and Brent get in touch? <clears throat> um, we met through Stevie, and I met okay. Stevie through uh, a friend of mine from high school. Was like, uh, cause I been trying to i was out here auditioning mm -hmm. booking stuff nothing was comedy and i was mm -hmm. like how do i express this get? part of myself well i was like i'm telling my agent i was like i don't want to do like this stuff i just i want to do comedy and yeah. were, i remember being told multiple times you don't look funny <laughs> and i was like i don't know what to do about that like that's not okay like literally that was my note yeah. you don't look funny and i was like dope okay yeah. <laughs> where do i go from here what do yeah. i do so i was like i guess i'll just like make my own shit and like show you guys and then maybe when you see that i could be funny you'll yeah, be yeah. like oh okay she can do it sure um so i just was trying to uh, right around that time i um a friend of mine sent me stevie stuff and was like you should reach out to this guy and i was like oh hell yeah so i messaged him and he was like let's write and we wrote and then ever since then i was like 
he's one of my best friends. We yeah. do a bunch of shit together. Um, and he kind of like showed me what he was doing. And then I, I met Brent and I just met like my whole group of people and yeah. started a channel and was like, fucking hope this shit works. <laughs> <laughs> this could end poorly, yeah. but it worked out. So you know, what? nothing really ends poorly when you enjoy it so much. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. D tell that to people addicted to meth <laughs> um, in Lancaster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in Lancaster. <laughs> no, but um, I I was just you know because it's like you start this thing and you're like. I have no idea if yeah, people yeah. are gonna be receptive. Nobody knows who I am. I don't look funny. <laughs> God damn it. So I'm like, here we go, but just um, trust it. And then <clears throat> I was like, one video a week, forever. And then I just yeah. did it and I didn't even promote it and I just somehow grew and here we are. Well, when you're actually funny, that's how. Thank you. you. Know, that's I, not. That's and, not somehow. That's directly correlated to fuck yeah. you having some chops. Yeah. Well, I was just like, I mean, I'm again. I'm in like, spite of your looks. It's, yeah. it's like so hard to be me. Um, no, but it's just like, I mean, uh, you have to be realistic about like what you look like in this business and be sure. like, yeah, yeah. I was well, well aware. I'm like, there's zero longevity to like being this person so <laughs> how do we figure out a career An alternate to, path forward. yeah i was just like all right well i'll skate by on this for as long as i can and see, <laughs> see if i can build a career in the time it takes when it starts to fade i'll have something under my belt so here we are it's uh staying strong but yeah so anyway my whole goal was not like i was like i don't want to be like a youtuber i just want to like not like i just want to show people i can do this so then sure. I can be like, taken seriously. Well, when people I can like look roles. at, I can even have the opportunity to audition for these roles. Cause I wasn't mm. even like, I wasn't even getting Not auditions. Even getting in the door. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. They and look, look, look your, like they look at your headshot and they're like, they're like, no, no. Sexy cup too. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, is this my career? And I'm also like, there's so many girls that are like stoked to be sexy cops. Sure, too. right. Like, right. they're that's the dream. Yeah, I'm like, that's, that's just not. not yeah. I have I have more to offer. <laughs> <laughs> I can do more. So yeah, it's been working luckily, but I'm just like hoping to kind of transcend. I'm like, I really want to like Jimmy Tatro it. Like, mm. take like I got a YouTube thing. You now start booking like stuff and get out. Keep still keep it, but sure, you know. Well, what a cool time to be alive, though. Oh, God, you know? that's what I'm saying. Can you imagine like trying to do that when the gatekeepers were the only way? Fuck, you know? like, no. What do you do? Blowjobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I probably wouldn't have been above. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> if this is the path. See what I can do. <laughs> All right, Harvey. <laughs> do I look funny now? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not oh, PC man. of me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> There's that. We've already covered that. You don't, yeah, it's true. You can't be funny and peace. It's just tough. I mean, it's me. I just yeah. make fun of myself here. <laughs> um, but yeah, and now I'm here and now doing this interview. This is fucking yeah. sick that you're like, I was so stoked. I, it took so long for anybody listening. Like you reached out to me like a year and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, so and wild. like, is, <laughs> and I'm like, I just, I, I can't come to Lancaster <laughs> trip there. And then you're like, I'm here. And so finally it's happening and I'm yes. stoked about it. <clears throat> Oh, well, God. I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate you being persistent and reminding me. <laughs> if there's one thing I am, Nikki, it is persistent. It's so good, though. <laughs> I also am, too. But it's like how you get shit done. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. You got to deal with a lot of rejection in basically any field that you're in. Yeah. But I assume the field that you're in is got to be like, so I did... I did six years of door-to-door -door sales oh and like management, training, recruiting, what and did you all sell? that stuff. A lot of stuff. I started in solar, did alarms for a while, did water purification for a while, sold roofs, sold, yeah, a bunch of different door stuff. Door to door? Door to door. I was just 100% picturing... commission. Door Holy to door. shit. I'm picturing like Cutco knives. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I actually, that was one thing I never, I never sold Cutco. I never sold uh, Kirby vacuums and I never sold uh, pest control. Dude, Those Cutco like the got you though. They fucking oh, they... came out with a penny and they were allowing to cut They're this penny. They're savages. I will never forget. They came into my home. When I was a child, my yeah. mom watched them cut a penny. And she bought a three thousand dollars set of knives. Uh, one thousand. She was like, <laughs> "I'm like, when are you ever gonna be needing to do that ever? Yeah. I don't know, but it's an option." The next dinner party. <laughs> Check out this penny I can cut. That's crazy, though. And yeah. I always thought, like, God, that's fucking brutal. It is uh, It is brutal. Yeah. yeah. Which is why I have a podcast now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> but that's it. I, like you keep doing it. That's yeah. I have so much respect for that. I could never. Yeah, well, uh, and I was going to say the same thing. That what I was going to say is like besides door to door and like cold calling in a in a you know a call center. Um, like those two things and auditioning for stuff and doing comedy and, uh, uh, trying to kill on stage with original material and then go audition for stuff. Like those three things have to be like the most rejection that you yeah. could possibly face Dude, in bet, a career field. I bet Jehovah's Witnesses have such thick skins. Oh, well, so <clears throat> funny, funny you bring that up <laughs> because I grew up, uh, so in Lancaster, yeah. there's basically everything that exists in Lancaster. And then there's a compound out there uh, that's an independent fundamental Baptist church. Holy shit. Of course there is. So a compound. Yes. Like a, it's like 40 Lancaster acres. Lancaster is a compound. By itself. <laughs> right. But the people in the community refer to this church as the compound. Oh like, God. oh, you go to the compound. Because oh, it's fuck. literally like, I mean, it, it, Lancaster's a pretty small town. Right. But this church is like 8,000 members. And in this like cultish community in the IFB, which is like, a subsect of a subsect of a subsect in a broader religion, you know? Yeah. And so it was like, it's such a weird place for this massive campus. You know, it's like, it's all state of the art buildings, like 40 acres. There's a college, there's a publication ministry, there's a K through 12 school, and there's a church all on this campus. Shit. And so I grew up there, almost literally grew up at the campus because I went there from kindergarten all the way through my senior year of college. Oh my God. So that was like growing up in this like bubble inside of Lancaster. In a bubble. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Shit. Um, so yeah, by the time, uh, uh, so I bring that up to say that like I was knocking doors when I was like seven in your because every Saturday we'd go knock doors and buy people to come to church. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So Did it work ever? I always feel uh, yes. so bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. I was 11 years old, Nikki, 12, 13 maybe, in junior high, so 12, 13. And I would knock on people's doors. And uh, and and like I said, I, 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 I was more of a, nat I think maybe a natural salesperson. Yeah. Um, because there's a ton of people who grew up the same way I did, who tried the door-to-door -door thing that I was doing. Because I tried to recruit them and yeah. be like, hey, come do this thing. We're making yeah. money, doing, you know, doing pretty well. And they just couldn't, like, they couldn't. Yeah. Pack it. That's so tough. I think I was uh, kind of naturally uh, good at it. But when I was like 12 or 13, I would knock on people's doors, invite them to come to church. And then like a minute into the conversation, I would ask them the question dead serious. Like, and I'm talking to an adult, like yeah. a grown ass <laughs> man or like a full, you know, like a mom of four. And I'm like, do you know for sure that if you died today, you'd go to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> and I would lead them in the sinner's prayer on their doorstep. Oh my God. Convert them and then bring them to church the next day. Dude, it's almost like more powerful coming from a child. <laughs> like, cause you're like, what do you know that I don't know? Yeah. You know what I you're mean? You're so sure yeah. and I'm so confused. Yeah, I, yeah. like, you've got it figured you out. You seem certain Damn. in a field of uncertainty. That's crazy. Yeah. You're also like, and would you like, <laughs> how's your solar? Yeah. Also, how's that energy bill <laughs> treating you? Well, I've got you, you here. Would you like some predictability? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's in your blood. So yeah, I grew up doing that Damn. and then did a bunch door to door. And then moved into podcasting. But yeah. uh, I say that to say that like rejection's a part of like anything you try to do. Yeah. If it's if especially if it's off the beaten path in any way, yeah. it's un it's unconventional. It, rejection is just like it's not even a matter of if; it's just a matter of when and how many times. Yeah, it's just and implied. Can you keep going? Exactly. That's you like know? it's you could be the best right. at whatever you do, but like, are you resilient enough to just keep getting? kicked in the yeah, balls because you're cause, like no matter how good you are you will still be rejected every day. all the way up to the top yeah you know even I mean? when you've made it yeah people are still gonna hate you mm -hmm. like it's just it, it's part of it well, you know it was interesting do you know tim ferris no um so he wrote the book the four-hour work week okay um mul like multiple new york times best-selling author um extremely successful guy by all standards you know a massive he has a massive podcast actually like one of the one of the top oh, rated podcasts this. in all of itunes and okay. he's talked like he, he's, he's kind of the guy that reverse engineers, you know, world-class people and whatever. And, wow. um, he's talked to every super su successful person that you can imagine at really at the top of the game. Um, and he, he wrote a book called, uh, two of them. One of them was tools of Titans. The other one was tribe of mentors. And they were both basically almost like collections, like fucking like encyclopedias of like uh, blurbs of conversations that he would have with like billionaire investors or like Arnold Schwarzenegger and like distilling success advice and whatever. And in his second book, I think, I believe it was Tribe of Mentors. He has an entire section in the book that's filled with rejection letters from people who didn't want to give him 
uh, blurbs for that book. And this is like his seventh book. Yeah. He's already, he sold millions and millions of copies of the four hour work week and some of the four hour body of tools of Titans. Like he's a very, very well-known, very popular podcaster, author, yeah. speaker, you know what I mean? Investor, angel investor. He's put money in all the big companies when they were all really small. And even he, I, I remember like reading that, that part and being like, if this dude yeah. still gets this much rejection, and like, what the fuck chance do I have? It's just, uh, you you either decide you got to do it or you decide that you don't want to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to avoid it. Yeah. But I also love that he put that in the book as like a fuck you. Yeah. Like, right. that's like, that's what I think. I'm like, God, I just like, that's the dream. Oh, like, it was a classy move. Because uh, then you're like, because then he still put the people in the book that didn't want to be in the book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, he just asked for their permission Loophole. afterwards. They were, they were like, no, I don't want to do it. And he was like, do I have your permission to publish this? Because I, the whole book was a chapter about how to say no to people. Right. So oh. he was like getting a bunch of people to say no to him right. who he didn't want to say no to him. But right. when they did, he was like, this is actually yeah. helpful advice for people who tend to say yes to too many things. You wow. know what I mean? Yeah. So it ended up being a super helpful chapter, but also That's ended great. up getting all the people who said no to actually kind of say yes. Oh my God. Which was like totally ninja mind move. Fucked yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I should read this book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's a doozy of a book. Yeah, but I'm always... It's one of those like, like toilet that. books, you know I was mean? just Where thinking you just that. just read like two pages. I didn't want to say it because I was like, I haven't read this book and it could totally not be that but i was like this sounds like a good book to leave in a bathroom yes. it's like blurbs of success exactly <laughs> exactly yeah yep so so yeah i think rejections you know it's yeah. just it's it the barrier to entry sucks, though but it's I, not fun no but i feel like it's good like I, my group of friends we all kind of uh, i don't know if it's just us but sometimes i'll just like randomly get like the urge to because i know everybody's really like we're all really hard on ourselves so i'll just yeah text or I'll get a text or I'll send a text out that's just like, hey, you're fucking awesome and we're gonna, we're doing this shit and yeah. like just out of nowhere and it's just like, we gotta do that because yes. otherwise we just like, we're just like nothing's <clears throat> happening but it's easy when you're, it's not you to see like, holy shit, look how far you've come, look at what you've done. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. And I just feel like it's important to remind everybody that. Yeah, it's the whole gap in the gain concept yeah. where it's like we tend to focus on the gap, what's what's yeah. what we have not yet achieved right. versus looking back and being like, well, I've come a pretty long way. Yeah, from, I've done some shit. You know, yeah. Knocking door on doors. Door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's no other way to make it happen. And that goes back to the persistence thing. It's like, yeah. It, you're going to get rejected. So yeah. either persist and work through it yeah. or go get a job. Exactly. You know, which there's no shame in. No. But you can't do this and then complain. Right. When you're getting all this, these rejections. Or, uh, yeah. That, my favorite is like the person who gets the job and then like uses the job as an excuse as to like why they're not. I'm yeah. Like, you got to do like do it both. Exactly. How bad do you fucking want this shit? Exactly. You figure it out. Well, yeah, that was, uh, I did not enjoy door to door. No. And so I started the podcast and I invested tens of thousands of dollars into like this new thing that I was doing, not knowing anything about yes. what I was doing, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Knowing full well that I might be pissing away yeah. tens of thousands of dollars that I didn't really have. Right. You know what I mean? This, yeah. is, all, this is all on a credit card. But, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 0% credit card, by the way. I did it smart. All yeah. Right? So chill, Dave Ramsey. Um, it was 0% and I never paid a dime in interest wow. because I paid it off Fuck before- yeah like with money from the new thing yeah. that I started. But but I took it that seriously. My point is, is like I was still knocking doors, right. working my job job, making money, paying my bills, and then doing this in my free time. Right, exactly. You know, like yeah. You, you just... You exactly you said like how bad how bad do you how bad do you yeah. want to do are it? you willing to just like really gamble on yourself that's what i did too i got all of the equipment to make sketches i was just like spent hours trying to learn premiere and like yeah. audio equipment and like what <laughs> what is aperture and i'm like okay all right what <sighs> fuck i'm losing so much money every day that i do this it's for so years expensive. and i'm so much time yeah. and you're just like i fucking hope this works. I did works. not want to be a videographer. No, I don't want to <laughs> do wanted, any of this shit. I just want to show up. That's all I want. Still to this day, I'm like, am I funny now? <laughs> it's working. Like, look at, see, I have, but I'm so grateful. You know, it's like, you so fucking glad I did it because yeah. it's like, especially now, you know, like, it, I'm like, if, I'm not at the mercy of yes. Hollywood. Somebody else's decision making. Telling me like, oh, you can't do this or you can't do this. Right. Everyone's on strike now. I'm like, right. I, 
I don't have to worry about it. And thank God I'm like, I've got my own shit going on. And it's like, you get to work with your friends and talk to new people and do new shit. It's yeah. like, what a fucking life. Did you, uh, did you have like a nine to five type job before when you were trying to get things started? <laughs> so I've always been, so <laughs> I, I moved to New York and I was in school there and I was modeling. So I, from a very young age, I don't know what happened, but I'm, maybe because I'm like a Capricorn and I'm very business oriented and I always knew I wanted to do this. But I was like, I remember I turned 16. My mom was like, you can model when you fucking get a car. Cause I was like, Oh, you did it, mom. I could do it. And she was like, I don't want you to do it. You're going to get a fucking eating disorder. I don't want to <laughs> deal with it. This was her advice to me. I was like, mom, I'm not going to get an eating disorder. Like I promise you. And by that time I was already like, I, which is I, always awesome when kids say those types of things. Yeah. <laughs> like, like they know better. Yeah. I was like, mom, don't worry about it for sure. It wasn't like, don't get pregnant either, <laughs> yeah. which I was like, all right, this is way more serious. But I, um, <laughs> I would, at that time I was like doing elementary school, I was doing plays. And then I was at this performing arts middle school. You had to audition. It was a whole thing. And so I was like mm. always trying to like, all right, I know what I want to do. Yeah. So I was doing like community theater and I was like, okay, I don't want to be a model, but I was like, if I start modeling, then I, when I move to New York and go to school, then I'll have a portfolio and maybe I can get money doing that. And then uh, probably get an agent for commercial work because that seems like a good trajectory of doing that. Hmm. And then maybe once I have a commercial agent, I can start doing like smaller role. Like this is my head of like, I have no experience in show business whatsoever, but yeah. I always like, but I always knew for some reason I was like, I'm not it, like, I'm going to have to do this. Like, I'm not going to get an audition. That's going to, I don't know what that even meant, but I was like, I'm going to have to make this happen myself. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but I was like, all right. But I had like a good grasp on the steps that I needed to take the logical steps to get to like, okay, model and then commercial and then maybe some TV stuff and then maybe movies. So that yeah. seems like it makes sense and like the linear path. Yeah. yeah. It was very linear. So, um, but when I had been, I was in high school and I had like three jobs in high school. I worked at a, a gym, a tanning salon and Starbucks. Nice. And I was like, I turn 18. I'm getting the fuck out of here. So when I was in school, I was, but I had also been modeling and doing like little jobs here. So I was in school in New York. I was modeling. I was like a. a what were you in school for? Acting. I okay. went to like an acting conservatory. I okay. was like, meh, sure. <laughs> uh, something. So I was like rolling around on the ground and crying and breathing. And I was like, this maybe will be helpful. But I was doing like, <laughs> I was self-submitting myself to everything. And then I, I ended up getting a commercial agent when I was in New York and a modeling agent there. So I was going out and auditions and in school. And I was a pizza prostitute, which is like, you know, you stand on the corner. You're like, get pizza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pizza, did you, pizza. Did you dress up like a piece of pizza? No, oh, okay. I fucking wish. I probably, I just stood there and I was like, does anybody want pizza? But like, that's the closest I've ever come to door to door. And I fucking hated it. I was like, I can't do this. Hey, Even people that that's like. That's a product you believe in though. If you, you, know you either I mean? want pizza or you don't, man. Like, I can't force this on you. It's your life. You know, you do what you want to do. <laughs> if people want pizza, they're going to get it. I don't know. So anyway, I was just like, sure. Um, so, but I, by the time I was like, I went to New York, I had a book already. And then I was doing commercial work and I, ended up moving to LA because I was like I could have such a better quality of life and be equally as poor if I just moved to LA like New York is just so brutal to I live. was gonna say why I'm mean, like difference between New York and LA for you at that time then oh well I always want to live in New York my family's like generations of New York Jews oh, okay. like it's just like in my blood we're just we're New York yeah but I was like that seems like a good place to live. I always wanted to just live there. I'm glad I did because, like, the hustle of New York sure. is just, like, you just go. How long were you there? I was there for three years. Okay. Um, and then I moved here, and I was like, everyone is just sitting around. So I was like, what the fuck? But I moved here, and the second I moved here, I was like, submit, submit. I had an eight. My agent was by Coastal at the time. Okay. And then I ended up getting a commercial agent here. So And then I was just submitting myself. I was like, I cannot get a real job. I can't do it. Like I just, mm. uh, I, My apartment in Venice was like $700 a month. And I- it, That's well, cheap. Yeah, I was split it. I know. I sublet it. I got, it was crazy. So- it was like $1,400 for two bedroom and it was an absolute shithole. But I was like, I don't give a fuck. Like this is fucking awesome. Somebody's shooting up outside. Yeah. yeah. I, I swear to God, a homeless guy broke into our building like week two. We lived there. They had the SWAT team come. He barricaded himself in the building. I was like, 
<laughs> I was six hundred seven hundred dollars a month. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right. sure, yeah. whatever, man. But I was like, so I was doing like trade shows and like modeling and auditioning, and mm. I started auditioning. But and then Instagram came out at that time, and like I I met. Uh, one of my best friends at a trade show and she was like do you have an instagram and i was like i don't know what that is and i was like oh why the fuck i was like why would i get that it's like the new facebook yeah well i was just like why the fuck who gives a shit what i'm doing and she was like i make like a thousand dollars a month on that and i was like and instagram (laughs) i've got it and that's i n yeah yeah i was like perfect but and i was like i don't know what the fuck to post and she was like just post like you have a bunch of pictures so i had like this whole portfolio of modeling and i was like i guess i'll just post that so then i started getting like random like influencer things and i was like Mm. that's fucking tight let's do that so i'm like auditioning like self-submitting getting like weird little like e-com modeling jobs and the whole time i'm like building this following of like creepy fucking dudes (laughs) and i'm like that's tight because i'm making money but also like this gets me nowhere. But I don't want to get into like the foot I'm, picture I'm, selling yeah, game. Exactly. Yeah. I'm getting so far away from what <laughs> this feels so like disingenuous from who I am. Like I'm like, and then I would be like shooting and working and people like, you're just like, why not, not who you seem like you would be. Yeah. And I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know. And they're like, why don't you put that? And I'm like, I don't know. At that, I was like, nobody wants to see it. These fucking guys don't want to see that. the aesthetic of the feed, yeah. you know, <laughs> No feet. No feet were um, shown, thank no, God. No, feed. Oh, I thought the you Instagram said feet. Feed. I was like, oh, no, no. that's a different, <laughs> that's a different lane. <laughs> that's not Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The feet. Yeah, I was just like, I don't know. But at that point, I was just like, fuck it, this isn't, I now have this tool of like something that could get me to where I want to be and I'm making yeah. like my overhead was low so I was able yeah. to like swindle a lot of shit from like a food and shit I was mm-hmm. like somehow managed to like get food well pizza a pizza no but like Instagram <laughs> I was like working with this meal prep oh, company yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't like I was like making all this money but I was right. like how can Doing I a lot of swaps how and can I hack and, the yeah. system yeah. yeah so it was like it's very low overhead and making somehow bartering for yeah. posts and whatever but I was like, fuck it, I can't, like, this feels like such a fucking chore, it's getting me nowhere. Hmm. This is exactly what I didn't want to do, is like, be hot, gr- I'm like, there's thousands of fucking hot girls on the internet, like, yeah. that's not what I'm doing. So I was like, all right, uh, let's just post some shit. So I started posting like, lip sync videos. I was like, this seems like a good segue into yeah. like, hey, I'm a person. So then, <laughs> And then it, I was like, people are pretty receptive. And I was like, great, let's just keep fucking slowly being like, I am a person funny. Yes, yes, peppered in. And I was like, if I lose people, like, I don't really give a shit. Like, this is going to help me later. Um, so, yeah. And then, but to answer your question, very long term, no, I never had to get, uh, but I was like at like CVS passing out like salad dressing. I was doing that shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I right, was right. like, it was gigs. Yeah. It was a lot. I was doing a lot yeah. of gigs, heavy on yeah. the gigs. Yeah. So, if Four you put ten. your resume together, it would just be like 18 pages. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, eh. uh, probably not. It was like a lot of it was like off the books too. It was like, yeah, yeah. So oh, totally. what was this under the table? Eleven year gap <laughs> in your resume. I was like pretty trying to find myself a lot in Vegas at trade shows, like cigar yeah. trade shows. Just yes. gross. Just getting groped. I'm like, all right, man, give yeah. me my five hundred bucks. I'm out of here. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> but you yeah. put it, you put you pieced it together though. Oh yeah. How long do you did, did you ever feel like during that time you were did you ever have second thoughts or did you ever second guess yourself kind of being like I wonder what would happen if I just moved back home and got Oh never out. not once. Never not, not once. once. I was like this has to work. Hmm. I it there was no like escape plan. Yeah, and that's cuz a lot of people like I would go back home and visit and people would be like so what like what if this doesn't work and I'm like no, that's not, sure. never once has that crossed my mind of like, if this, I feel like the second you start thinking of that, then like, well, this this has, to, I am fully invested in yeah. this. Like, yeah. if this doesn't work, I'm fucked. <laughs> 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 like, legitimately, like it has to. Well, but there's something so powerful about that level of commitment. Yeah, you yeah. It, especially when, when you're in these hyper competitive fields. Right. Because there's some people like, that are ultra talented and then you have to go compete with these people. Yeah. And then if you do anything other than work on that craft, 
you're obviously going to get left in the dust. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you ha- like if you do the half ass job, you get less than half ass results. Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like you have you have to put in extraordinary effort Unless you're to get kid. extraordinary results. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> which happens a lot. <laughs> and I'm like a cool I'm, ass name. I'm yeah. fucking going up against people's kids. Yeah. Like right. shit, man. Right. So against people that have other advantages. Right, exactly. That, that are not like accessible right. to you or yeah. to, to us like normal people. Yeah, that are I know. Out here trying to make it happen. It's you know? just so crazy. Once you get into it, you're like, there's so much. And the, Nepotism. I, and- yeah. <clears throat> and the, now that I'm like making my own shit, like it's, I used to just be like, what the fuck? Like, just give me a chance. But now right. that I'm like producing my own shit and spending money, I'm like, I totally get why they wouldn't hire me and they would hire Zoe De Chanel. Like, they know people like her already. And sure. like, they already. So it's like, you kind of understand that, but it's still like, yeah, like when you're when you're the person that's investing the money into the thing, you're, right. you're kind of like, all oh, right, I yeah, kind of understand because I, I wouldn't take a chance on that person either right. when I have a for sure thing here. Yeah. But if you I'm look risking, at their proof of yeah. concept here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this endless maybe, you'll see she can do it. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's fucking. Wild. But it, yeah, what a crazy turn that everything took, and now it's almost like you don't even have to be good if you have a following. You people like that's like the new well well, because a lot of those same people that are investing a ton of money into it yeah they know at the end of the day regardless of the final product it has to sell it has to be viewed people have to like actually fucking care yeah you know what i mean so when you when you're out there and you have already done the legwork of media distribution for them they're like oh well this person like has 112 followers but this person has yeah. 643,000 followers like yeah. if we cast this person like if they're apples to apples yeah. in terms of talent in terms of their fit in the they role they never are then it's like <laughs> <laughs> they never fucking are that's the pro that's my problem yeah i'm like are you fucking kidding me like <laughs> that what did you even like audition this person like or you just, I don't, I, I feel, I don't know. I have so much to say about it. And now it's like, you know, I, Brent and all my friends, we, we really try to like make a really good product and we yeah. like invest and <clears throat> got fucking gaffers and good sound. And like, it's like a <clears throat> legit production. It's high quality production. for sure, yeah. And then I'm like, we're looking at pe- like TikTok feeds of like, uh. Did you <laughs> and NPCs? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, first of all, don't I? <laughs> yum, yum, banana or yeah, whatever. I'm yeah. like, and 40 million views. Oh I'm like. Uh, $7,000 a day. What are we do? What? Yeah. Wh- what do we do? Right. Like, what do we do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, but that is so weird, by the way. What can, do you know about, like, what is it? Because, like, is it sexual? Like, I don't. You know. I can't I, figure so it out. So, I think the answer is technically no. <laughs> <laughs> but me pitching this to you, my mom yeah. <laughs> my new career path yeah. so mom it's technically not sexual no <laughs> however uh, yeah you know if you have a hot girl with a somewhat low-cut top that's I like mean, pretending to be sexual, this thing but then also like, like a lot of the guys that are watching it are going to turn it into something sexual classic yeah but uh, I don't they're, get they're, they're talented folks. How did guys. that get here? Yeah. <laughs> the guys that turn everything yeah. sexual, they really are much more so than the NPCs. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a gift. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I just don't. It's wild. I, to I'm me. like, how is this? Like, what are, guys, yeah. I just want to like rally everyone and be like, we, have we lost our minds? Like, if, if TikTok was already the bottom of the barrel, then this is like, what's where next? are we here? What, what is we? this? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that works. Is the, the pendulum has swung. But she's making. She was making the, uh, this one girl anyway was making like seven thousand dollars a day. Someone told that me that too. for a I'm couple like, hours of just like pretending to be a non-player character. Not uh, yeah. I I thought that was an insult. Like I've heard that used as an insult before. Like yeah. oh, NPCs. Not anymore. Not anymore. Jokes on yeah, you. We're making two hundred thousand dollars a month. Look at my mansion <laughs> of cash flow. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'll cry myself to sleep in my Lamborghini. Yeah. I don't even <clears> know. <throat> how that i was explaining i was talking about this recently i'm like can you imagine like bringing like a girl home for <laughs> thanksgiving dinner and like your fan you gotta she's there your family's like what do you do and she's yeah. like i'm an npc yeah. your grandma's like what is that <laughs> <laughs> it would yeah. be you got an uncle who's just like is this sexual it would- <laughs> <laughs> technically no technically <laughs> uncle joe it's not oh, but fuck. here's the link yeah <laughs> link in bio yeah I don't know. Uh, you're man. gonna have to spend some money though. 
Jesus yeah. If you want to give her a cherry or whatever the yeah. fuck. I, I don't understand. It's like all. Donkey Kong for yeah. people? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it, man. I'm like trying to figure it out. I don't think it's meant for regular people to get. I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's mean? something to get if yeah. you just look at it. But then with the girl, like if you did bring her home to a family, it's like it's hard to argue that like, well, we also flew here on a jet. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> like, th- it's weird. I th- but, <laughs> it's what we know, do. <laughs> but we're ditching and we're going to go eat at Nobu. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. I mean, more <laughs> power to turkey. him. I know. Yeah. Fuck. But, you know, it's uh it's what happens when you try to do things the right way, you know. Yeah. It's like you got to see sometimes you got to you got to be totally cool with taking short-term Ls because it's yeah. like that is something I will never do. Yeah. I don't care how much money it is. Yeah. I'll never do it. That's the thing. You know? I mean, there's so much stuff too that I'm like, god, I would be so much further ahead in my career if Yeah. But further ahead by whose definition? Right, exactly. Yeah. Or like financial like uh, you know, whatever, sure. like there's so many times where I was like, man, I wish I didn't have to, when I was like super fucking broke, I'm like, God, I wish my mom didn't instill these morals in me <laughs> that I like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yes, God I do damn it. Like if yes. I didn't know that this would impact my career negatively. Yeah. Uh, but it's also like, I'm, I'm not, se- like my humor. If I didn't have the wisdom to yeah. see the future. Yeah. If yeah. I didn't know exactly how men thought, like <laughs> pretty much, I would just totally fuck it. But like, you can't, Yeah. to me, I don't know. I, I just, I think maybe I have like more of a man brain where I'm just like, I wouldn't take me seriously either if my titties were out. <laughs> like, fuck, why would you listen to my jokes? <laughs> I wouldn't. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> fuck, I don't know. But I mean, that's also not, I'm, I'm self-relatable comedy. I'm not like, you know, selling, I'm not like Eliza selling sexual comedy. So right, right. it's tough when I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's tough. You like you said, aware. it's tough when you have values. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it really is. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, yeah. Morals, <laughs> a strong moral compass. Yeah, Fuck. right. I was at uh, find myself in these like random dinners and like rooms with people that are extremely wealthy. Yeah, and inevitably, when you're in some of those rooms, you meet a lot of really, really great, cool people yeah. who've built amazingly valuable companies who have given back and and make a huge impact, and I love those people. Yeah. Every once in a while, you get in rooms of people who kind of had that flash in the pan wealth, Uh. or they come from family money, or or they, like, they they accepted Bitcoin payment in 2012 and then now they're worth $700 million. You know what I mean? And like, but they think that they're a business person, even though they'd never made like everything they objectively do loses money, but they have so much money from this one thing. And you get in the room with those people and And you're just just like, Oh yeah. God, you are just a nightmare of an individual. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they try and tell you what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, that's, that's, I've been trying to do that more to like network and put myself and like talk to people and go sure. places, which yeah. I fucking hate doing. Yeah. Hate going places and meeting <laughs> new people. I fucking can't stand it, but I'm trying because it's important. Doing to, stuff stinks. To sometimes. like have experiences yeah. and things. But I do find myself around like, you know, actors and mm. like people that are in the business, to, but very similar where it's like, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And I'm like, yeah. ugh, fucking yeah. kill me. But because so much of it, it's like, are you doing that? Or mm-hmm. are you just saying that you do that exactly. and you just not do it? Like, exactly. I don't know what to believe. And it's I, way too much dick measuring that goes on. Right. And it's like, and, and it's like, you don't even know if you're using the right measuring tape. Right, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, or if there is, do should I bring one? I don't know. It's it's a lot, but there there are people like you said when you meet people that are actually doing and actually have good advice. You're like, oh, it reminds you why you're doing it. It's like you you still got to do it uh, because to me that's where the opportunity comes from. Right. You know what I mean? And and obviously, like my show is called Build Your Network for a long time. But we switched to Travis Makes Friends because it was like after doing a show about like quote unquote networking right. and like doing a deep dive into it. And I read a bunch of books and I was talking to all the best people in the world about this subject. And after a while, I was just like, the people that I know that are the most well connected people who have been around for a long time, which is important to me, who have yeah. a seemingly good reputation with the majority of the people that they meet. Nobody's going to please everybody. Yeah. But if they have an overwhelming majority of people, you know, see them in a positive light. They do good things in the world. They they put out, you know, they get, they add more value to everybody in their life than they, than they, you know, take from other people. It's like when I, when I see those people, they're not like 
networking. Right. They are making friends. Yeah. Like they are just going out, meeting people, connecting on commonalities, finding things that, that you have that may, are maybe similar, adding value where they see that they can, yeah. making an introduction or recommending a book or like they're just, they're there, they're valuable. And then those people are opportunity manufacturers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like when you, when you get around opportunity manufacturers, you can't help but slip into opportunities sometimes. They're yeah. like, how the fuck did I get here? And it's like, oh, well, if you intentionally put yourself in rooms with people who right. have an abundance of opportunity flowing out of them, it's just like, you're going to catch some of that sometimes. Yeah. See, that's the thing though. That's like, I need more... I, whenever I think, I have like a bad connotation with networking because it feels yeah. like you're going there with an agenda. Exactly. And like, it just feels desperate. Whereas like, if I, 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 I just feel gross going it's, into it's like. It's done the wrong way. It's and that's networking. The right. And I'm like, I don't like, these people just think I want shit from them. And right. like, everybody's like a fucking blood sucking piranha. Leech, yep. Either way, <laughs> either you're the guy that everybody wants something from, or you're the person that's like. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go talk to this yeah. person. It's like the, yeah. none of that's good. So right. I've always tried to like stay away from that. Mm -hmm. So approaching situations with like making friends, like yeah. you're saying, like just no expectations. Like this person could be cool and like things, who knows what they do? I don't know right. or not, but. And being okay with like, you're not going to connect with everybody. Yeah. And if you, if you, even if you connect in terms of like we shook hands and we met. Right. Maybe we just have nothing in common. Yeah. And it's like, I thought that they would be like, I've met plenty of people that I was like, oh, I really want to meet that person. Cause like, it seems like we have a lot of aligned interests and, yeah. you know, similar personalities or backgrounds or whatever. Yeah. And you meet them and spend time with them. You're like, eh, this guy's kind of a douche. <laughs> this guy <laughs> like, sucks. Nah, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, I'd like to leave now. Yeah. So, yeah. but then you leave. And yeah. then, you, but you also like, through that person, you met these two other people. Right. And they're your people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, you, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to know that if you never yeah. go out and meet the other. Like you know what I mean. Every dud knows a stud. You know yeah, what I mean. It's just like you, you, know. you. You might. You might. It's always the dormant ties, like the weaker connections, where it's yeah. like, oh, this person met, introduced me to that person. I met that person at that person's party. Yeah. Who introduced me to that person? And it was like, and that person is they're my best friend. Yeah. Or like they've done this thing, and it's just like they're such an awesome, amazing human being. I can't imagine my life without yeah. that person. And that, you know what I mean? It's like I would have never met them if yeah. I had not met that person who introduced me to that person. That I know person, it's that crazy person. when you think that. You know what I mean? And you're like Jesus, but it is those. There are those people that are like, I'm sure you know them. You might be this person where like. You meet them and they're like, I, you have to meet X, Y, and Z. They're like connectors. There yeah. are people that are truly like on this planet and they just fucking connect people. Yeah. And you're like, how, like, this is, I, I know like a handful of people that are like that. And like the second you meet them, they're like, you have to meet this person. And this person is, you guys are gonna, like, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. You're just like, oh, okay. Like, yes. I, I, I do need, tend to do that. Yeah. I need yeah. those people because I'm not going to be, I'm not that guy. I'm just like, if you think that I trust you. <laughs> I don't, I just met you, but like, you've seemed very sure of what I need to do for my career. Yeah, it's, it's the, it's the certainty rubbing off. Again. Yeah. yeah it's just, just like they, they see it. Right. So I, I don't know enough people to do that. I'm like, you should meet my fucking mom. <laughs> Cause I know her. And she, she's cool. She's cool. I guess. Sometimes. <laughs> if you she can be on, cranky. If you get her on a good day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm really trying to like, to do more of that, but it's, yeah. it's tough. It is tough, yeah. especially when you have like a good group of people already. Yeah. It's so tempting just to be like, why wouldn't I just go hang out with the people I already know that I like? Right. Or I'm like so <laughs> busy. I'm like, I just don't even want to go. I, if I'm not hanging out with the people I already like, like right. I just don't I have. I want to go home and watch Netflix. Yeah. yeah. I just it's, just, it's a lot of mental energy just being. It is. I, I'm, you know. Would you consider yourself uh, introvert or extrovert? Y yeah. I am. I am. I'm very. Uh, I'm trying, this is a new thing for me where I try and like live a life and like not be so forever. I'm very yeah. type A. I'm very linear. I'm very, if I'm not working towards my career, I'm wasting time here. Mm. Like my thought process was very much like, uh, if I don't make it, I don't want it to be because I didn't do everything in yes. my fucking power yes. to m make it happen. Like yep. I will be able to rest easy knowing. Eliminate I all regret. Exactly. Yeah. So that was my thought process forever. Mm -hmm. Uh, until recently when I realized like I don't have 
I, I do the same thing every single day. I don't have like any new experiences. I've never been on vacation. I've never done anything. I've never done fucking anything. I, I don't do anything. Yeah. Even with my friend, I go to bed at eight o'clock and I wake up at 4.30 in the morning and I don't fucking stop. Yeah. That's my life forever. So now I went on vacation recently. I'm like trying to do no more new things and meet people and have new experiences and it's paid off so much in yeah. my art. But I don't know where we're going with this. I think I was talking about well, introvert. introvert. Yeah. So, yes, but it's it's you. been. If I wasn't actively trying to do that, I would be living like I was. Where I'm, I was per, I was pretty much fine. Like just being by myself and working, sure. and like because I'm tired, and I'm like, eh. yeah. And, but I do in it. It definitely takes more effort for me to go out and meet sure. people. I I would never. It would never be my choice to like. I would never really make plans. I'm just kind of, I've been pushed into plans by proxy and like saying yes. Yeah. So that's really, I ha it's, it's just saying, yeah. I don't even make the plans. I just have to say yes to the plans. And that, even that was very ch tough for challenging. me. It's challenging. So I let me ask you this, <clears throat> who you know or what you know, which one do you think is more important? Oh, this is very chicken or the egg type of a thing. Cause if you, what, if what you know is that you have to make friends to do what you like to do, then I would say I'm gonna take a very logical approach to this question. <laughs> There's <laughs> well, no right or wrong, by the way. I, I think asking. it's what yeah. you know, because uh, what you know can align you with who you need to know or want to know. Sure. To, yeah, just in what I feel very, I feel like there's this was a loaded question I was not prepared now for. Now I'm going to make you look like an idiot. To, do, yeah, I'm, uh, to do what? What's no. the end game? No, no. It's For me, it was like a question that I asked. I probably asked that question like 500 times yeah. to 500 different guests on uh -huh. the show. <clears throat> and it was always... So I first wrote the question when I actually first started the show. And I thought it was going to be one of those... Because I always heard that growing up. Like, oh, who you know is more important than what you know. It's all about who you know. It's all about oh, who you yeah, know. Oh, yeah, everyone says you know, that. It's basically only... It's, it's exclusively used by people who got passed up for an opportunity. Right. Because they... You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like, they didn't know the yeah. boss's daughter right. or whatever. Right. You know? Yeah. So, uh, so most of the time, it's used in a negative connotation. Right. <clears throat> so I always heard that growing up. So, like, one of the questions, you know, I have a show on network yeah, exactly. relationships. Like, who you know or what you know? And then they would all say who you know. And then we would talk about relationships and why yeah. who you know is better. And I started asking this question and then I started getting wildly different answers right. for the question. Yeah. And so that's why sometimes I, I still throw it into conversations because I, I think it's still an interesting thought experiment because I've now been presented with evidence from, from, from people who are much more successful than I am um, for both sides of the conversation. Um, I'm, I, I still put it in the who you know category for me specifically, but, um, but I do like definitely agree that it is kind of a chicken and egg thing. And because well, the reason I brought it up is because you were just saying like, I, I was by myself and I was yeah. working and I would, every day I did this and I did this and I did this. I was putting in the action. It's like that to me, that's the what. Right. Like what is like the categories of like what, mm. the, the things you actually know, like your knowledge, but also like your competence, your skill set, your craft. Like right. those are all under oh, the I what. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? The who is like, the relationships that you have who are going to bring opportunities to you or potentially help you be better at what you do right. and, and, oh, and help you improve or get better or whatever. Oh, see, I see them as intertwined questions because so, you have <clears> what you, you have to know that you, you have need to be people. competent. Like, oh, sure, sure, sure. That's, yeah, that's what like yeah, yeah. where I'm like, otherwise, if you just think it's work, then sure. you're not going to, you could be the best person ever, but you're not going to meet people that to w collaborate with. Right. So that's what I'm saying is chicken and the egg is like, you have to know what that you need. Yeah connections with people they're both vitally important yeah you know to, to me it's now like the way i look at it now is it's more like cycles yeah it's like there's gonna be phases of your life where you should probably be focused on the what like right you should probably be like if, yeah. if you're not good at anything like <laughs> you should probably go get good at something first you know just what I mean? go like, get good at something like, and come back like, and like learn how people. to read and then come back to me <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean Jeez. um but yeah. but you gotta you gotta be competent and yeah. you have to be like especially in terms of like young people getting started in their career it's like you gotta be competent and you gotta be ambitious and hardworking. it's like yeah. if you can do those like if you have these qualities then it's like to me it's the who you know outweighs right. the what because if you go get around the right people who've been there done that walked the road a thousand times before you like they can help you learn at such an increased 
rate. Yeah, like, like they can they can true. shorten your learning curve by yeah. decades that's, and turn yeah. it into a couple of years yeah. because they can be like, oh yeah, I did that. Don't do that. I did that. That worked. You right. know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they can help you so much. That's interesting. <clears throat> I guess it just depends. It depends on like what your, what your end goal is because like I think I just took that and ran through like a million scenarios in my head of like, well, it depends. What do you want to do? Because yeah. like, it depends on what you want to do. I think if you want to be really good at something, like I think it, the question gets a little bit muddled, but if you just want to be fucking famous, then it's all about who you know. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't care about like the quality of what you're doing, <clears throat> then like, yeah, you just n meet someone and you could be like subpar and whatever. Right. right. I it think, is such a nuanced thing because yeah. like the most outsized examples of it are still a what you know thing, I think. Right. Like, if you get so good at something, then everybody wants to know you. Right. You know, like if, if you're Mark Zuckerberg, right. You know, it's like, well, you invented uh, Facebook. Sure, which but like, changed the world. It was about so. who he knew also once he did it. Like, sure. Like, it was helpful while he was building it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To know the right people or bring yeah. the right people into the dorm room or yeah. whatever. But then now he gets every opportunity he could ever want or yeah. imagine because of the what, because right. he's the inventor of Facebook or like a Joe Rogan. You know, what yeah. I mean? it's like these, these people, they like, like, like Joe Rogan can meet anybody in the world that he wanted to meet. Yeah. With probably a few emails or text yeah. messages. You it's know what crazy. I'm saying? Like, but that's because of the what. Right. But the what was fueled by the who. I know. Because he built the show off of the who. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it's this constant like cycling through. Yeah. But <clears throat> I like to bring up the conversation because I think the majority of people don't think of the who part as being that significant. Right. They're, just, they, they're so focused yeah. on like, oh, fuck everybody else. I'm just going to get really good at this thing. Like I just need to focus on my craft. I just need to do this. Like, no, I don't want to go to that event. No, I don't want to go to that party. No, I don't want to go yeah. to that thing. And it's like, and then you start doing that and you couple that with skill, competence, knowledge. Yeah. And, and then it's like, oh, well, yeah. shit, I, I wish I'd done this 10 years ago because yeah. like that one person introduced me to that person, like that cut three years off of what I thought I was going to be able to do. Right. You know what I mean? That yeah. It's, it's to me, it's like the difference between incremental rates of time return right. and exponential rates of time return. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it just, for me, it was just like, I, I truly <clears throat> believe this. this is, I, I truly believe like if I was just still <clears throat> doing that, like still just like work, 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 like I probably would be like doing pretty well, but I think it's just like my happiness as yes. a human being was. So that, <laughs> I was gonna say, that's like the ultimate, like the, the thing that tips the scales to right. the who for me yeah. <laughs> is the fact that like we're the loneliest we've ever been right. in society's history, even though we're also the most connected we've right. ever been. And so <clears throat> the, the other piece of that is I read this study from, I think it was Harvard recently. And it, it to my knowledge, is the longest study of uh, of human beings' behavior in terms of achieving happiness. The longest ever standing study. And they started in like the 1920s or 1930s. Oh, wow. And they followed these people throughout their whole lives. And at the end of their lives, they asked them the question of like, what's brought the most happiness type of a thing. And it was this detailed study. And when they first started it, they had these, you know, hypotheses that 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 were you know, based on your your financial success right. that are based on, you know, these other things like, oh, this is probably going to be it or this is probably going to be it or we think that this is going to be a major factor. Yeah. And turns out the number one factor overwhelmingly in the whole study was the human connection and the quality of relationships. Yeah, I totally agree And so that, that to me was like a, oh, well, that tips the scales in the who right. direction. Yeah. Because like you can be so good at something, but if you're just fucking lonely. Yeah. Like, so that's it. <laughs> like, what do you, you yeah. know what I mean? You can go, you yeah. can go pet your Emmys all you want. Exactly. You know what I mean? But like. That's what I thought. What I was do? like, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to be super successful and look around and be like, I've never been on vacation. I have no friends. Yeah. I've been like, right. I do the same thing every day. Right. Like, it's what? like everybody it's like, will remember me, but I what? won't remember anybody. Exactly. And it's like, that's not a yeah. great I have no fucking deal. life. <laughs> yeah. No friends, no nothing. So, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's, that's true for who. Who you know? God, can you imagine being a part of that study? Oh, fuck. That your whole <laughs> life you have some guy that shows up every like four just months. Just like in the bushes. Yeah. Just that's, like, that's Greg. He's hmm, doing this study of me. Seems unhappy today. How long is he doing this forever <laughs> yeah. until I die? Yeah. <laughs> and then he's going to ask me a question. Yeah. Well, the, the unfortunate thing is that they probably agreed to do it like when... $12 was a lot of money. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, sign this lifelong yeah, contract. I've we'll pay you $1,000. $1,000? $1,000? King Greg's here again. $12 a year for 94 <laughs> years. I can't imagine. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. yeah. But you know, it's crazy. Uh, everything, everything. When you look back, is the only way that you can join the dots. You know, it's like yeah. what Steve Jobs said. It's like yeah, there's no way that you can connect all the pieces moving forward. Like when you no. moved out here, you weren't like, all right, I'm gonna start this YouTube channel. I'm gonna meet these guys, and then we're gonna no. do these collaboration videos, I, and like that's gonna blow up my social, and then I, that's gonna lead to this other thing. I told you, I, I, I did have that f feeling though when I was really young of like I'm gonna have to do this, and I remember it. I remember like getting introduced to YouTube and my friends and being like. This is this what is they it. fucking meant. What, like, this is what that meant. What year did you first get introduced to YouTube? Uh, In the context of, I'm going to start creating here. Probably like three and a half years ago. Really? I started my channel. Like, I started my, I was doing a bunch of stuff with Stevie. Probably okay. like three years. No. Yeah. I, I met Stevie like, I don't know, six years ago. And then I was okay. working with him for like a couple years. And I was like, I should start doing this and yeah, he was yeah. like yeah you should start doing this <laughs> yeah was, no shit <laughs> yeah so i guess i started my channel i don't know May maybe like three years ago i started my okay. own stuff okay yeah might have been a little bit more time gets weird <laughs> but yeah and then i just like and i had a following on instagram which is so weird i, I had this following and then i started my i'm so bad at business i started my <laughs> youtube and then i just never told anyone yeah like you had youtube never uh, no link in bio nothing yeah. and then i just grew on its own and then only recently like maybe like the beginning of this year my best friend was like you should like tell people that you have a youtube <laughs> and i was like never even occurred to me what i know so but like people would find me on there and i was growing on there i wasn't yeah. even doing anything yeah. so now I'm starting to well, that's that. the nice thing about like kind of the short form content yeah. environment of instagram and tiktok and yeah. other things is like people who consume that are going to go to YouTube and be like, oh, what else does she Yeah, have? or yeah. people on YouTube have no idea. Like, people know me now from, like, I saw you on Facebook or YouTube mm -hmm. or it's never, like, one thing. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool. And it's nice to know that, like, actual people are watching it, <laughs> which is, like, really the best thing ever if, like, someone's like, I love your videos. And I'm like, you're a person and not a bot. Yeah. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. You're not trying to sell Forex yeah. on somebody else's Instagram account. Exactly. And, like, comments. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then w w the podcast came out yeah. recently, too, right? Well, uh, so I've had this podcast for f five years. But you never told anybody about it. No, I so I do. I did tell people about the podcast. <laughs> the podcast people know about. Um, and I just started it because I was like, it was my best friend and me, and I was like, why not? Yeah. It was one of those things where I was like, let's throw everything at the wall. The more like funny yeah. out there, why not? Yeah. So I started it with like no expectations, just like doing it. And my best friend and I talk for an hour. Um, but recently she now. I was like very much like a stage parent. She's not an entertainer. She's just like wants to have a life with her husband and like yeah. a baby. And I was like, dance monkey. Boring. Yeah, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> um, you like don't want attention all the time. That's weird. Um, so, well, so, you have security yeah. in yourself. Oh, <laughs> self-worth and not validated by other people. What's that like? Um, so yeah, so she, uh, she was like, I don't want to do it anymore. And I was like, all right. So I have my good friend, Chris. Christina has stepped in, um, and so she's now my new co-host. And so, yeah, I mean, how's that going? Do you like it? Yeah, I, I mean, I love it. It's like yeah. I think it's super important, as I'm sure you can agree with. Now that you do this, is just talking to another individual for an hour, any extended period of time, any ex with no phones, right. eye contact. I'm like, oh, weird people having a conversation and totally. connecting. It's almost an uncomfortable amount of eye contact. Like, while I'm looking at you right yeah. now. I'm well, like, it's weird now that we we've been, were talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Now I feel uncomfortable. I didn't before. Before it was fine. Um, but yeah, it's... it's no, I it, think it's it is compared to real life, though, what you're saying. Is, yeah. Is, it, it's, it's weird because it's like, we're going to post this on social. Sure. Which is like almost kind of counterintuitive to what we're talking about. But the act itself yeah. is... Yeah. Not something that happens frequently. I mean, people fucking post that they're themselves doing whatever anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm here doing this, but it's like at least this is this feels like it is good for my brain and like yes. to be a functioning member of society. Mm -hmm. Like whether or not my podcast does anything for me financially, like I think it's it's like going to therapy for me. Like mm -hmm. I think it's important to take care of this aspect of being a human yeah. and connecting with people because we don't get to do it enough. Well, and I think too, the the more technology continues to change the work landscape, yeah. the soft skills are going to be 
a lot more valuable than yeah. even some of the hard skills. Yeah. And podcasting forces you to sharpen those soft skills, yeah. like communication, eye contact, yeah. asking somewhat relevant or interesting questions. Listening. That, you know, active <laughs> listening. Yeah. yeah. Like all of these things that, that are actually very beneficial right. in, 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 whatever field that you're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? In any professional sense, yeah. like you need to have some of these like soft skills dialed in. Attention span. Yeah. Right. Like that's right. really like truly I get scared for myself. I'm like, Oh my God, I need to like really connect with someone because I'm scared. My attention span is just going to, cause it's happening to everybody. It feels like right. nobody has right. a, like, well, uh, literally when we were hitting the record button, I was talking to you about what the show's about while checking my watch and looking at a message. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could probably put this on Do Not Disturb while I we're know, talking. It's, you know it's, I know. Mean? It's hard, though. Like, it seeps into us. It's like yeah. becoming a part of our DNA where right. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. It, it's it, And it's a it's a, like a real skill. Like when I yeah. start, I don't know if you if you were this way. When I started the show, I uh, I realized that I was not good at asking questions. <laughs> I was like, oh, this uh, is way harder than I thought. I was focusing yeah. on all the other parts of running right. the show. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? And then yeah, I was well, like, you're like the comb- it's- yeah, I was like, oh, we actually have to have content now. Right, right. <laughs> this is not I know. easy. I'm still bad do. at it, but yeah. I'm good at, I feel like my I mean, my show is like, I don't really ask questions. It's just more like conversational Talking, yeah, yeah. and one thing leads to another, but still that's, it's, it's, it's its own skill set. Yeah. That's why I, I love when people say that they're going to be the next Joe Rogan or they want to be the next Joe Rogan or like it's easy to do what Joe Rogan does or like they, 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 they down, they, they like play it down. Oh like my it's, God. Not, it's like this dude's having a three hour conversation with a theoretical physicist. I, uh, like try to have that conversation for 12 not, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like that's, I can't with every, I can't imagine doing yeah, that. It's, I can talk about like farts and NPCs <laughs> for an hour, but like, <laughs> No, thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's such a skill, and I think it's so important, especially for you, who are. That's such an incredible thing to have. You're talking to all different kinds of people about so many different things. You're yeah. prepared for any situation, really. Like any most situations. Well, yeah. When you find yourself in a room with, especially with like, uh, you know, higher quote unquote higher status people, right. or celebrities, or or really wealthy people, yeah. or whatever, best-selling authors, or whatever. It's like I've practiced now. And unintentionally practiced having conversations with high level people on the show all the yeah. time. You know what I mean? So I have to come prepared to those conversations. Right. I read their book. Like I have to yeah. gain more knowledge. I have to know how to at least speak somewhat intelligently about this topic. Yeah. And it helps me in social situations when I find myself in a room, like before I would have no idea what I'm supposed to say to this person. Yeah. It's like now I got stuff to talk about or I have yeah. questions that to ask. Yeah. They're genuine, real like questions yeah. based on my own curiosity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah, it's been extremely helpful. So, That's so cool. Nikki, I uh, appreciate you coming on the show. Thank we should you do this so again sometime. It's a lot of fun. I, I love when the conversation just like when, when I get the notification that it's coming up on an hour, it's like, Oh, well, it flew by. Yeah. It flew by. That was yeah. awesome. Great time. Yeah. Thanks so for coming on. Thank you for having so me. So if you're watching, listening right now and you don't know Nikki, go check out some of her stuff. She puts out some hilarious things on YouTube, on Instagram. Um, give her a follow at Nikki Howard. Nikki underscore, underscore Howard, Howard. Yeah, on yeah. Instagram and then uh, Nikki Howard on YouTube. Nikki Howard on YouTube. N-I-K-K-I. Yeah. That's right. All right. Good. Perfect. Nikki, thanks for coming on. This <laughs> is a blast. Thank you for having me.